Hi everyone! We are going to be learning about the artist Bridget Riley. Her work is the inspiration for our op art projects because she is one of the most famous op artists. You might be wondering, what is an op artist? Well, let's take a look. Op art, short for optical art, is a style of visual art that uses optical illusions. Op artworks are abstract and with many better known pieces are created with the black and white. Typically, they give the viewer the impression of movement, even hidden images. You can even have like a sense of flashing or vibrations. Even the work can seem to swell or grow in size or even change shape. But then we look at the word op art and you might say well where does the op come from what's op well that's optical so what is optical when you go to the eye doctor you are going to an optometrist the word optic or that opt at the beginning of optometrist means that it has to do with vision or how we see with our eyes so now that you know a little bit more about the term op art or op artist Let's talk a little bit more about who is Bridget Riley. She is an English artist whose vibrant optical, there's that word again, pattern paintings were central to the op art movement of the 1960s. So there was actually a whole movement of many artists who were creating optical illusion art or op art. Here is one of her works called Movement in Squares. How does it make your eyes feel? Are you seeing some of those things that we talked about on the last slide? That warping or swelling or vibration? So take a look and see what you think. Another thing to notice is the title of this work, Movement in Squares. But if you notice, the whole way that she's able to create this illusion is she actually changes those squares into rectangles and those squares morph into rectangles that get smaller and smaller and smaller and then they get a little bit bigger and they grow. So that is how she creates that illusion. So the squares only start really on the left side and then they change and morph into rectangles. Pretty cool. So I'm sure you're starting to notice that we have a pattern with Mrs. Sasso. You learn about an artist and we are inspired by their work. Well, that's because that's what artists do and you are artists. And Bridget Riley is no different. She had her own inspiration. She would go to museums and she would look at artwork and she would find ways to make it her own. So let's take a look a little bit more about her. So Bridget Riley spent her childhood in Cornwall, England, and she attended Goldsmith College, which is now part of the University of London. And she went to the Royal College of Art. Until 1960, remember when we talked about that op art movement, she painted primarily impressionistic landscapes and figures or people. Her study of the pointillists, particularly one named George Seurat, led her to experiment with color and optical effects. So I want you to take a look at the right side of this slide. It says Bridget Riley painting called Pink Landscape. So that is one of her paintings. And if you look down on the slide, there is a very famous painting called Sunday at Le Grand Jatte, and it is a George Seurat painting. And the way that he painted was he used little tiny dots of paint to create one whole work. So if you look at the close-up on the right, it, said, it says George Seurat close-up. That shows how he creates his work. It kind of reminds me of pixels. So I know that you probably have an idea of what those are. Pixels are on the computer and they help to create our images. And when we zoom in, sometimes we see a lot of little greeny squares. 
So this painter was ahead of his time, and Bridget Riley was really inspired by George Seurat's work. Another artist that she was inspired by was Victor Vassarelli, and he was an influence on her work because he used geometric shapes. So she began to use geometric abstraction, and she used intricate patterns of black and white, and then later she started to use alternating colors, and they produced illusions of movement and 3D waves. We are going to see some of those really awesome works coming up. Bridget Riley was part of an art show at the MoMA, or the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, and this art show was called The Responsive Eye, and it was held in 1965. Here is one of her works that was on display at that very important art show. This artwork is called Current. You can certainly see the black and white waves here. I think it reminds me of the current in water. What do you think? We're going to look at more of her works. I want you to look for the black and white. I would like you to look for value. So that's where we see things that are lighter or darker, like shades and tints. Look for color. Do you see complementary colors? Hmm, complementary colors, if you're not sure yet, they are colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So we would have purple and yellow would be opposite on the color wheel blue and orange, and red and green. You might be able to use some of those complementary colors in your Bridget Riley inspired artwork. Let's also look for lines. Where are straight lines? Where are curvy lines? And look for shapes too. And definitely check out how these works make you feel. Sometimes you might enjoy looking at these works, and sometimes your eyes might feel a little funny. Here is one called Drift Number Two. Check out those lines, check out the value. That's where it gets like more like in a shadow or in the light. Check out that black and white and see how it makes you feel. Feel free at any time during this video to pause and take a look at her work a little closer if I'm moving too fast. This work is called 19 Grays. I imagine that it's called 19 Grays because she probably had to use that many different types of grays to get the effect that she wanted. How does this work make you feel? What do you think about 19 Grays? Can you see all the dots? Some seem to disappear inside of, to me it looks almost like a V. What do you see? The title of this artwork is called Fall. It kind of reminds me of the other work I showed you of hers called Current. What do you think? And what are you noticing? Are you noticing the lines and the color? How are your eyes feeling? Are you having to take any breaks while you look at these? Or are you just able to watch all of the movement and it doesn't bother your eyes at all? We are all different and we are all going to see and feel these works in different ways. Here's that work movement in squares again. I thought I'd show it to you one more time just so you can take it all in and see it a little bit bigger this time. Remember, feel free to pause or fast forward at any time. Now we're getting into a little bit more of her colorful work. So we're moving away from the black and white and taking a look at how she's creating some op art with color and shapes. I also see some lines in there. What about you? This work is called Nataraja and it actually is supposed to represent dancing. Can you see dancing and movement? How does this work make you feel? 
I love the title of this work. This work is called Bright Shade. That's such an interesting title to me. I really like how she used lines and I love how she used color. There are certain spots that feel brighter next to some spots that feel shadier. Hmm, I wonder if that's why she called it Bright Shade. I really don't know. It's just me looking at the work and kind of using clues. What do you think? How does it make your eyes feel? Do you enjoy op art? Or is this really not your thing? There's no right or wrong answer there, which is the great thing about art. In 2019, the National Gallery of Art in London had a show all about Bridget Riley, and they even invited her in to do an artwork on the walls of the museum. If you take a look in the top left of this slide, you can see all those dots on the wall. Can you see there are two people leaning over a balcony? That's Bridget Riley and one of the museum curators. They're taking a look at this work. This work is called Messengers. And she was inspired by another artist who used the word messengers to talk about clouds. So this is almost her inspiration of clouds and how she used nature in her artwork and makes it really, really simple shapes. But you can tell there's even a pattern going on. One of the nice things about Bridget Riley is that she's still here and able to tell us about her work. So I want to read this quote to you. Riley said, the act of people looking was a central part of her work. And I quote, I want to make you or the viewer feel alive, to have a kind of joy in feeling alive. I just hope that they give you pleasure. So that's what she was saying when she was talking about this work called Messengers. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about Bridget Riley and seeing some of her work. I do have a really wonderful video that you can watch, and it's of Bridget Riley herself talking about her artwork at this art gallery show. You should check it out so you can hear the artist herself talk about her work. I can't wait to see how Bridget Riley inspires you. As always, you need to enjoy yourself and stay creative.